Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this service of worship. It is great to have you here on this special Sunday as we celebrate Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit. I hope you feel um, sufficiently welcome and uh, red. <laughs> Thank you so much for wearing red. I want to invite you to just look around and see this sea of red that we are. Uh, it is wonderful to have you all here. And uh, welcome to special guests from Florida who are here today. How appropriate as we talk about the Spirit giving us boldness to go out and proclaim the gospel to everyone. How appropriate to have friends from this state and out of state uh, to join us today. Great to have you here. We were at Moccasin Bend Mental Health Institute this morning to celebrate Pentecost with some of the residents there started our day uh, with a great group of folks who came to be with us. So I want to thank Susan Lipsford and Ken Waddell for uh, being part of us, uh, present with them. Uh, we are having worship and following worship. We are celebrating the birthday of the church with cake. <laughs> so uh, please uh, stay if you can and have a piece of cake uh, to celebrate the birthday today. Um, it will be there in the back uh, for us to have a piece of cake. And following that, our session will be meeting downstairs. So thank you all. Announcements are there on the back, and you will see there are some events going on this week, a little out of the ordinary. Um, the Spring City Chorale has a concert this afternoon. A couple of our members are members. Um, the last second dining out uh, will be tomorrow evening at Crust Pizza, if you'd like to join us for that. Um, I'm going to have Carlton talk about our special event this Wednesday evening in just a minute. And you'll see that Beloved Woman is having a celebration. Sherry is going to be singing some of the songs from her new album. They are celebrating four years of being a not-for-profit agency here in Chattanooga, helping women to become self-sufficient. So congratulations, Sherry and beloved woman. And uh, come if you can on Thursday evening to the Barking Legs Theater and uh, help help them celebrate. Uh, other events there, uh, you'll see we need help packing bags for Project Hope, our ministry uh, that helps those who are homeless with food and medical supplies. If you are free on Saturday and can help pack bags, they would appreciate that. And then uh, on our prayer list, uh, you'll see a couple names have been added. Uh, the Condra's friend, Eric Ellis, we continue to pray for. Chris Shardle, Sandy Smith, and Dorothy Jump uh, continue to be in our prayers along with those others. And next Sunday, we are continuing our series on the Confessions. We'll be looking at the Apostles' Creed next Sunday, and Reverend Lina Hart, wave, wave your hand, Lina will be our guest preacher, so uh, plan to be here for that. It will be uh, a great morning, I know. Um, gonna invite, are there any other announcements before Carlton comes up? Anything else for us today? Yes, Sandy.
Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, great. Scenic City Corral at 3. Uh, appreciate that. I do want to give a shout out to Jane Guthrie and uh, Sandy Franklin for helping with the decorations this morning. Sandy and Jane made these pins uh, for us, so many thanks. And uh, don't forget to check out the niche and also our flame of fire in the back uh, that Jane did for us. Uh, wonderful. And uh, note to self, if you're getting helium balloons, you got to get them on the day of, okay? <laughs> so um, just please imagine they're in the air. <laughs> All right, uh, Carlton Thomas is going to come up and share with us a little bit about uh, the second acts special event this Wednesday evening. First of all, we have to get ready for Wednesday. It is a coffee house. Can you do this? Some of you may remember sitting around listening to poetry and afterwards the snapping of the fingers, which I understand was done because people were performing in residential apartment buildings and they didn't want to disturb the neighbors with their applause. But you'll see there that we have some interesting selections that will be presented by members of the second, um, second acts. What, there is one typographical error, and I know it's going to be hard for you to understand, but I made a D in typing in high school that should be the cremation of Sam McGee and not the creation. But we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. There will be, in coffee house tradition, coffee and desserts. It starts at 6.30. We know you will enjoy yourself because it is an eclectic program. There will be poems and prose that are humorous. There will be some that are inspirational. So please come and join us on Wednesday. Can we do this one more time? It's not like cicadas, but you'll get there. <laughs> Thank you, Carlton. Look forward to that. Okay, folks, this is a day to be filled with the Spirit. So, if you feel like saying hallelujah, if you feel like saying amen, if you want to clap, if you want to stand and do a little moving around, you may especially today. Let us worship God.
Will you join with me now responsively in our call to worship? A mighty wind has blown. The presence of the Spirit is with us. The presence of the Spirit moves and gathers us into community. Let us marvel at God's power. Stand and sing hymn number 286. Thank you. Please be seated. Friends, today we are going to hear the story about rush of a mighty wind, the sound that filled the house. We're going to hear about fire that were like tongues in that room. And we believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit continues to be ours. And yet sometimes we act as if we did not have power. We relax and we get used to the familiar. and We forget what has been given to each of us. We fall and we fail. We don't rely on that power. And because God knows that, because Jesus Christ is merciful, we own that and bring to God our confession that we may start again. Shall we join together in prayer? We aren't ready, Lord. It is easier for us to hide in the upper rooms of our lives, to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence. But you have challenged us to come alive again with your love and words of healing mercy. Forgive our hesitant witness and our complacent spirits. Heal our fears and our wounds. Help us to be agents of healing and hope for others. Challenge and inspire us to overcome our feelings of inadequacy and remind us that you have called us beloved and have given us what we need to proclaim your good news. 
Let us continue our prayer in silence. Amen. The only one in a position to condemn us is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ does not condemn us. Jesus offers forgiveness through the Holy Spirit that we might know we are free and we are cleansed. And we are able to greet this day fresh and new. The good news of the gospel is that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Let's stand and give God the glory. be seated. And I will invite Marcia Kling and our children to please come forward. This is one of those days. Hi, Millie. Come right in. God bless. God bless. Um, you know what? Why don't we do this? That's a great idea, Jaina. That's a great idea. Tell me something. What is your favorite day of the whole year? Do you have a, Millie, do you have a favorite day? How about you, Emily? I like Christmas. Oh, I don't blame you a bit. <laughs> Jaina? Um, I like Easter. Easter. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite days, too. Christmas. Yes, Tristan. Uh, Rory? Halloween. Oh, Halloween. I don't blame you a bit. But you know what? I have a favorite day of the year, and I don't know whether, Rory, let's look right up here. I want everybody's eyes right here. Rory, that's my boy. My favorite day of the whole year is August the 16th. Now, why did I pick that, do you suppose? It's my birthday. <laughs> and from the time I was a little girl, my mom always made birthdays so special. And because I wasn't in school, it was summertime, I got to celebrate all year long. So when I was a big girl and going to my very first job, when I moved from New York to Chattanooga, Tennessee, I was really shocked when August the 16th rolled around and it was not a federal holiday. <laughs> I thought sure it would be. I had to work on my birthday. Can you imagine that? Sure you can, because most of us do work on our birthdays. This is a very special birthday today. As Miss Kathy has already said, this is the birthday of the church. And we're going to hear the whole story in just a few minutes. But I want to set the scene for you right now. It was Jerusalem. It was about a little while after Jesus had been hanged on the cross and his disciples were 
totally uncertain about what was going to happen next. They knew that he was not dead because they had seen him rise to heaven as a body. But they did not know what was going to happen to them. For one thing, they were kind of enemies of the state right now anyway. And for another, when you lose somebody who's so important to you, who's a real leader, you feel very, very uncertain about the future. And that's what was happening with the apostles as they sat in this room when all of a sudden the strangest thing happened that had ever happened to them. And we can imagine how it might have seemed to them. A great huge wind blew up. And all of a sudden, tongues of fire, just like we have, well, you all don't have them on, but many of us in the congregation do. Those tongues of fire landed on every single person in that room. And all of a sudden, they have an ability that they couldn't even fathom, they could not imagine. They were able to speak in tongues. What had happened? was something that had been predicted many, many years before and that Jesus had told them about too. He told them that he was going to leave them, but he was not going to leave them without a helper. And the helper was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended on everybody in that room and so many people heard the sound that they came running to see. And listening to one of the disciples, Peter, speak about what was happening made those people who came to hear so excited about a new life for them that they too were converted on that day. And do you know that from that one incident, 2,000 people were converted to following Christianity, what we call Christianity, following Jesus. 2,000, that is so many more than in this congregation this morning, it's just hard to imagine. But even the next day, there were more. And that was the beginning of the church. So you got, and I got, and we all got on that day, a beautiful gift, an infusion of the Holy Spirit. And the thing about the Holy Spirit is, he doesn't go away. He is always there. And when you need a helper, he's there. Many, many years ago, I was very, very ill. And it didn't look as if I was going to be able to raise my children who were your ages. And I was very, very sad and very Lacking in any kind of hope, Ryan. Come on over here. That's my boy. And then, when I was at my very lowest point, the Holy Spirit said to me, Marcia Kling, you foolish child, have I ever left you alone before? And have you ever needed me the way I, you need me now? And the answer to those two questions was, no, Lord. And my spirits were raised, and my whole system was calmed. And that was so many years ago. I'm here to tell you about it today, because the Holy Spirit helped me in a very, very wonderful way. And he will do that for you as well. Now, today is going to be a little bit of, little different from what we normally do. We're going to be staying here, so I'm going to ask you, Ryan, and you, Jema, to sit back there with Mr. Carlton. Would you do that for me, please? I will, when we're finished, I'm going to come back down and tell you something else. But right now, yes, just right in there, darling. Right now, Miss Kathy and I are going to tell the story of what happened in that room so long ago that we celebrate today.
Our epistle lesson this morning comes from the 8th chapter of Romans. Listen now for God's word. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. From Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as fire appeared among them, and a tongue of fire rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Praise the Lord! Come, Holy Spirit! Praise the Lord and come, Holy Spirit! Praise the Lord and come, Holy Spirit! Praise the Lord and come, Holy Spirit! Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing among the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.
last Sunday during church, the children made what we call spirit sticks. I hope that's not offensive to anybody. I don't, I'm not sure that it isn't. But anyway, we have these. And we are going to show you all today exactly what happened when the Holy Spirit came into that room so long ago. Now, I think I can give everybody, Jaina, that's the one you made. Um, I think this is yours. Does that look right? I think so. There you go. Uh, Dexter? Millie? Uh, let's see. Ryan? There you are. Remember where to hold a drawing in the center there? Let's see, Tristan, where yours is drawing. This must be you. No? There it is. There is yours. And Emily? There is yours. Do it. Does everybody have one now? What are we going to do with these? Come on up here with me and show, let's show everybody what we're going to do. First of all, we have to have sound effects for this or it wouldn't be effective. So what are we going to do? Shh. That's right, Jaina. Maybe you all want to join us. If you do, please feel free. Shh. Oh, that's good. That, I can tell you've had training, Carlton. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, now we're going to show you what the spirit looked like. It was, <laughs> it was all over the place. So let's pick an aisle. Um, Millie, why don't you go up that aisle over there, and you go, can go with her, Emily, and be on the other side of it. Jana, you go on this side, honey. That's right. And Tristan, you come here and go with her. And you two boys, Dexter, you be on the outside over there. And you two boys go up this aisle. And we better do this before we lose all of our strings. We're, we're dropping more. Than... <laughs> OK. All right. Are you ready? Run up that aisle. Oh, that's good, Dexter. That's good. Ryan, <laughs> let's go up that aisle. OK, I, <laughs> I think it's time for our next hymn. <laughs> 610. Please be seated.
what happened on that Pentecost that doesn't happen here every Sunday. We're gathered together in one place. We hear sounds of many kinds, some soft, but some loud. We feel the presence of the Spirit. Sometimes it brings tears. Sometimes it brings a burning warmth. What did that day of Pentecost have that we don't have? I want us to think seriously about our answer to that. Because if we say, well, something happened, that spirit came like the sound of a mighty wind, we don't hear that every Sunday. Tongues like fire rested on each of those gathered. I don't see tongues of fire here. And they started to speak in other languages. I don't speak another language. If we're saying that something happened, are we saying that was a one-time thing? Pentecost doesn't happen every Sunday? If we say nothing happened, if we think, well, no, I think Pentecost still occurs, I think power and courage and hearts of fire are still given by God. The church still comes to life and shares the good news. If we think nothing happened, then what are we doing here? If the Spirit gave those disciples anything, it was boldness. It was the capacity to realize that what Jesus promised to give was given. The disciples recognized, or at least Peter did, that this is what the scriptures had talked about all along. Did those disciples receive the gifts of the Spirit, but that was then and this is now? Lots of people were gathered for a festival, Shavuot, one of the three Hebrew pilgrimage festivals, also known as the Feast of Weeks, marked the wheat harvest. It was celebrated 50 days after Passover. Rabbinic tradition teaches that the date also commemorates the giving of the Torah to Moses. On Passover, the people of Israel were freed from enslavement by Pharaoh. And on Shabbat, they were given the Torah and became a nation committed to serving God. They became a nation committed to serving God. Something happened on that day of Pentecost. The Spirit was unleashed. And disciples were empowered to go out and share the saving grace of Jesus Christ, to do the saving grace of Jesus Christ. They recognized the love that Christ had and wanted to share it. Barbara Brown Taylor says, when Jesus let go of his last breath, willingly, we believe, for love of us, that breath hovered in the air in front of him for a moment, and then it was set loose on earth. It didn't evaporate. It grew stronger. And it grew in volume until it was a mighty wind 
which God sent spinning through that upper room in Jerusalem. God wanted to make sure that Jesus' friends were the inheritors of that breath, and they were. And the consequences? They spread that breath to every region, every city that was there that day. Every person, every nation heard that God had come for them, cared for them, loved them. And nothing that happened on that day of Pentecost isn't happening right now. But we get comfortable. We don't expect fire and the sound of a mighty wind. Our lives are basically tranquil. Our needs are taken care of. Our affluence lulls us into a faith that's safe and secure and predictable. We're good people, and that feels good enough. Friends, take a deep breath. Breathe in that breath of Jesus. God loves you. And the Spirit gives us the ability to widen our love. Imagine us loving one another, yes. And then imagine us loving beyond our own people, even into all of creation. I took some time this past week for study leave. I attended online a preaching conference and listened to different speakers and preachers, including worship services. You can be the judge of whether I learned anything. I also took some time out, some time to care for myself. Ken joined me, and on Wednesday, we took our first kayak ride of the season on the Elk River near Suwannee. Drifting along on the quiet water, drinking in the lushness of the trees and the deafening sound of the cicadas, <laughs> we suddenly saw one of those insects struggling in the water. It certainly occurred to us that a drowning cicada was a convenient way of reducing the population. Instead, we reached out to it with our oar and scooped it up and put it in our boat. This allowed us to really Look at it. And you know, its body was shiny. It had red eyes. Its wings looked like clear stained glass windows. When it dried out a bit, it walked around, even walked on my hand. Eventually, it flew off, saved. 
I don't really love cicadas. My normal reaction is to smack any insect with my fly swatter or my fingers. But on that kayak, I took the time to see that cicada. Another one of God's strange and mysterious creations. And what I realized is that the part of me that wants to swat a weird-looking, noisy, and maybe dangerous insect, the part of me that wants to see it drown is the same part of me that might decide someone was weird looking or noisy or dangerous. The same part of me that might decide it would be better for all of us if someone was put away or silenced or drowned. The attitude toward an insect living or dying and a person living or dying is not really that far apart. Widening our love, extending it to everyone on this planet is a force we cannot underestimate. What actually happened on that Pentecost day? God in the person of the Holy Spirit infused those disciples with the ability and the passion and the motivation to stop hiding out, stop clustering together, and go proclaim in different languages that the saving grace of the Lord is for everyone. You think you haven't been given another language? You speak Southern. You speak, I understand your pain. You speak, I've been addicted or mentally ill too. You speak, my knees also ache. My memory also fails. And change is hard. You speak, I've been alienated and ostracized and judged wrongly. The Spirit is here. Pentecost wasn't, isn't, just a nice story. We still need disciples who will see the wonder of this world and protect it. Disciples who will listening to the deafening cries of those suffering. Disciples who will go with wide hearts to love in the name of Jesus so that all may know his saving grace. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's stand. Let's go.
Let's move and say and show and do what it is we believe today using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And will you stay standing and let's join our hearts in prayer. Knock us off our seats, O Lord, with the wind of your Holy Spirit. Don't let us just sit back and rest as though nothing important was happening. Remind us that you have come to bless and prepare us for your service. Now is the time of proclamation and celebration. Now is the birth of your church, not as an exercise in futility, but as a dynamic group of people who know you and love you as you know and love each of us. Flame up our hearts. We want to be part of your healing love and mercy. We want to be people who do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly, witnessing to Christ's love always. Pick us up and propel us forward into your world as we offer our lives back to you in joy and hope. For the sake of Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father. closing hymn is number 288. Jonathan, let's sing it through twice. And uh, you probably know this. If you do, you don't need your hymnal, so free yourself up and drink in the Spirit. Friends, go forth! Don't be
be here. Be out there. The Spirit has come, comes, and is coming. Widen your love. Put it out there. We know the world needs it. All of the world needs it. May the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ our Lord and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit fall upon us. Amen.